Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our channel. Today, we'll take a deep dive into the life and career of one of the most charismatic and controversial figures in the history of Formula One, James Hunt. With his charming personality and daring driving style, Hunt captured the hearts of millions of fans worldwide during the 1970s, becoming one of the most iconic drivers of his generation. James Hunt was known not only for his racing talent, flamboyant personality, and controversial lifestyle. James ended up broke after winning his maiden F1 title. To understand how this all happened, let's take a look at his career on and off track. James Hunt began his racing career in the late 1960s, and it wasn't long before the F1 community noticed him. He made his F1 debut in 1973 driving for the Hesketh team. Despite their lack of resources, James managed to secure a few podium finishes, proving himself to be a force to be reckoned with on the track. He was rivals with F1 legend Nicky Lauda, who regarded him highly and battled him numerous times throughout their career. The duo respected each other's fighting spirit and never gave an inch in their fight for the win. James Hunt's off-track lifestyle was as controversial as his racing style. He was known for his love of parties, women, and drugs. He was often seen smoking and drinking in public, and he wasn't shy about his personal beliefs. He was known for his outspokenness and wasn't afraid to speak his mind on any topic. His larger-than-life personality made him a target for criticism from some quarters, but he remained unfazed, living life on his own terms. Nicky played quite a part in James's life, even as far back as his Formula 3 days. Nicky managed to save James from being arrested during that time period. James and his mechanic used to sleep in their van at the circuit, and the circuit was closed in the evening. However, locking the circuit never stopped James from going out at night to have fun, so he used to bring the lock to go out. In doing so, someone saw him doing that and called the police to arrest James the following day. Nicky managed to intervene, saying, Are you nuts? He's racing with me. Don't put him behind bars. In the end, he managed to convince the authorities that his actions weren't of ill intent and that he should be let off. Nicky once said, I knew him before we met at Formula One. We always crossed each other's lines. He was a competitive guy and he was very quick. In many ways, we were the same. I had a lot of respect for him on the circuit. He was a very solid driver, Nicky Lauda. This is a direct quote from Nicky. James raced for McLaren from 1976 to 1978, during which he won his one and only championship. He won six out of the 16 races, narrowly beating his fierce rival Nicky Lauda to the title. James was known for his fearless racing style and was willing to push his car to the limit to achieve victory. James famously drove that McLaren in the season's final race in extremely wet conditions without a gear lever, which caused his hands to bleed, but he powered on to win the title. After failing to complete the 1979 Monaco Grand Prix, where he'd made his debut six years before, Hunt stated to the press on June 8, 1979, announcing his immediate retirement from F1 competition, citing his championship status, and was replaced by future world champion Keke Rosberg. In fact, Hunt had been struggling with financial problems throughout most of 1978 and 1979. His career earnings were estimated at $750,000 in 1977 and $1 million in 1978. However, reports in 2009 indicated that his estate was worth less than $150,000 at the time of his passing. His downfall was due to his obsessive need for speed, which got him into lots of trouble with the law and destroyed his marriage. His last race was in Japan in 1986, and he retired with two races still to run. But Hunt wasn't permitted to drive for another team so he could make money for his creditors. He had made a comeback after he recovered from being broke. Hunt put himself in a tricky personal situation after retiring. Hunt opened a restaurant in London called Jimmy's Café de Paris. The restaurant failed miserably and was closed within a year. He had invested in a company that unfortunately collapsed, leaving him broke. This, coupled with his drinking addiction, nearly ended him. When Hunt was in the deepest depths of despair, he was contacted by Nicky and asked to meet with him. He turned up at a cheap restaurant on a bicycle with no air in its tires, looking completely finished, as Nicky describes him. He had long hair and dirty clothes. Looking at his condition, Nicky said, Are you nuts? You'll kill yourself like this. In that meeting, Nicky promised to support him, 
provided he did something about his addiction and come back. He had to meet with James once again for the same reason, after which James got a hold of things and turned his situation around. Due to the help of his friend and rival Nicky, he managed to get out of his unfortunate situation. James became clean and commented on races in good shame for the BBC for the last three years of his life. He was as fit as had ever been, said Nicky, in an interview with Graham Bessinger. James and Nicky climbed the motorsports ladder together, and in an interview, Nicky said, When he won the championship half a point ahead of me, I told him that I'm glad it's you and not the rest. Sadly, James Hunt's life was cut short when he passed away in 1993 at the age of 45 from a heart attack. He called his doctor in the middle of the night complaining about chest pain. The doctor told him just to lie down and sleep, but that chest pain resulted in a heart attack which took his life. Nicky Lauder felt great emotional pain after rescuing a friend who was in a state of extreme sadness only to learn later that the friend could have been saved if the doctor had responded to his call promptly. Nicky Lounder remembers him as a dear friend who was taken too soon, but lived life to the fullest. Nevertheless, his legacy as a Formula One world champion, commentator, and cultural icon continues to inspire and captivate people worldwide.